it is for Monday Morning Mojo, and I'm so excited that you're here with me today. So it's time to wake up our brain and get our thoughts going this morning. So I hope that you're ready for that. Um, today and next week, we are going to review. Oops, let's see if I can get that in the camera. We're going to review John Maxwell's book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And I'm excited to do this with you for many reasons. One, um, leadership is so important, right? So whether you are leading a team, leading a company, um, a division, a department, whatever it is, or if you work solo, uh, leadership is vitally important to our success and developing our, our leadership uh, will have a direct impact on the potential that we reach and the, um, I think, the reach that we have as well. So, you know, even if you are a solopreneur, if you're working with customers and other people, your leadership is extremely important to your success. So I'm excited to go through this with you. I'm excited for us to break down the book and uh, for us to take a look at what John has to say about leadership. The other reason why I'm super excited to go through this with you is because John Maxwell, um, he is an author of, I believe, around 80 books. If you're not familiar with John, he is a uh, world-renowned speaker, expert on leadership. Uh, he has, as I said, authored, I believe, around 80 books on different topics, but especially about growth and leadership. And um, he is, I can say, after following him and reading his books for many years, in the last couple of years, he has become a mentor to me personally and a friend. And uh, I have had the pleasure of sitting down with John and, and talking to him one-on-one -on -one and learning from him. And he's an incredible individual. He's also someone who really gives. He has an incredible philanthropic mission and a reach around the world to change people's lives and, and really teach um, values and leadership in other countries. So a lot of fabulous things about John and the work that he does through the Maxwell company. Um, I'm a certified coach through his company and also through other endeavors uh, like a company or a not-for-profit, I should say, called Equip, which you can do some research about. So I'm excited whenever I can share anything that John has taught me or he's written about. And so again, this morning, we're going to go through, this morning and next week, we're going to go through some important topics in this book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. And a subtitle on this book is Follow Them and They Will Follow You. So I'm going to just jump into this this morning. And um, if you'd like to, to grab paper and pen and take some notes, um, I'm always encouraging you to be a part of this platform in an effort to really grow professionally and personally. So if you don't mind, I'm going to ask if I can coach you this morning. Tell me if that's okay. If you're with me on Facebook, give me a thumbs up that I can be your coach this morning. So. Uh, that's always exciting. And, you know, there are definitely thousands and thousands of books out there on leadership. I chose this one because I believe that uh, John has written something that's simple to understand. I know it sounds like there are a lot of topics in here with 21 of them, but what he talks about here, the wisdom he shares truly will stand the test of time. And I think that this is one of the best books on leadership, certainly. Um, it is a top selling book. It has sold, uh, it's a New York Times bestseller. Uh, there's millions of copies of it that have been sold worldwide. So, you know, if you need a little credibility, you'll find it there as well. So again, why is leadership important? Maybe you want to jot that question down because for us, uh, our leadership style is unique. And I said in the opening of, of this morning's mojo that your your leadership and your ability to lead others, including yourself, will have a huge impact on the, the success that you achieve. And so we can all agree that this is certainly important, yet our style is unique and how we approach leadership is going to be different. One thing is true though about leadership for all of us, and that's really, I think, how we can define leadership, and it's very simple. Leadership is influence. 
leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. So your ability to be effective, your ability to create change or be a catalyst for growth, to be a business developer, to be uh, someone who can um, you know, get people behind a vision or idea, whether it be in business or in church, community, in, in something, um, you know, philanthropic, right? All comes back to your leadership. Your, not just your leadership style, but your leadership capacity. And so one of the things that John talks about, uh, one of the laws he talks about in this book is the law of the lid. And basically the law of the lid helps us understand that at any given time, we have a capacity in our leadership and we have, or a leadership uh, influence, right? And, and that lid determines how effectively we can lead other people. So if we're the head of a company, the entire company really sits under our own leadership lid. If we're running a team, same thing. If we're running our own business, if we are just looking at how we manage ourselves, right? How we lead ourselves through our own disciplines and our habits, wherever our lid is set, we're not going to go beyond that in terms of results or success or effectiveness because our lid is keeping us in, in, in this one space. And so we look to constantly raise our leadership lid so that we can become more and more effective, so we can become more influential, so that we can really, I think, do a better job of understanding people and how to lead people and how to help people. Because the one thing that leadership is not is managing something or people, right? It's not about managing, it's about leading. So it's about influence. So in order to be of positive influence to others, we have to know that we've developed more of our own skill set. We've developed good habits. We are, you know, developing our character. We are connecting with and acknowledging our own values. So for us to really be effective as leaders, we have to start with ourselves. And so the law of the lid helps us take a look at who we are and ask questions around how do we have to develop personally in order for us to be a great leader. And we all can agree the world needs more leaders today, right? So this, this is another reason why I wanted to, you know, start with this conversation today early in the year, because we definitely need to show up as, as strong leaders, as leaders who care about other people, as leaders who want to make a positive impact and influence the world around us. And imagine if we could all show up that way. Imagine the compound effect we would have if we could all just be someone who is working at really showing the world the best that we have to offer every day. But un, in, in doing that, also understanding that there's always more to learn, that there's always more for us to learn, to develop, for us in, or, in order for us to give more. So the law of the lid talks about at any point in time, recognizing where your leadership level is and then acknowledging what you could do to get to the next level. And so as you identify the gap, that's gonna show you some of the things you need to work on. So another um, fascinating part of this book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, is that John shares a lot of stories to, I guess, support and edify the laws that he is um, discussing. So you'll read about other leaders, you'll read about CEOs and, and world leaders and, and what they've done to you know, develop themselves in, in respect to any one of these laws. Um, and so in doing that, you'll also find that some of these great leaders will be very honest and vulnerable about their experience. And I think that's another important aspect of leadership is, is that leaders are not perfect and leaders know that, but yet leaders work every day to put their best forward. A true leader is, is really not operating from ego. And I know we can all say or agree that there's a list of leaders around this you know, world that may be operating from that ego, but a true leader is really coming from a place of contribution. 
So if you are excited to grow your leadership ability this year, that's another question I would put in front of you. What do you have to offer? And I know you have so much. So let's get to work to identify what we have to offer. What are our unique traits, abilities, skills? Um, and, and let's make a decision to put it out into the world. Let's make a decision to come from contribution so that other people can connect with that and benefit from our, our unique gifts, right? And in doing that, that's being a leader. And I think that leaders are also focused on connecting with other people so that they can create leaders as well, right? So I'm always motivated to pour into other people and help them grow as, as individuals, as professionals, as leaders. And when I can sit back and watch other people grow in their capacity, uh, not only is that very fulfilling to me, but it, it really develops me as a leader because leaders grow other leaders. And, uh, and that's really, you know, where the magic starts happening, right? So it's not about just having all this great knowledge and feeling important because you have it. It's, it's being humbled to know that you have this great information or knowledge or experience or whatever, and that you have the ability to share with other people. And in doing that, we have to be more comfortable being vulnerable, being transparent, because success is never a straight line. Success is always a curvy, windy road. And a lot of us are failing forward as we're achieving results and achieving you know, increments of success. And it's okay to admit that. And I think we all find such support when we can connect with people on that level too, um, because leaders, people don't want a leader that's perfect. They just want a leader that's real. Right. Would you agree? Let me know if you agree. Put that in the chat. You know, we want we want to connect with leaders who come from that humility, who come from that vulnerability, who are willing to share uh, the good, the bad and the ugly, who are willing to inspire, who are willing to take the time to give and contribute. You know, that's who a leader is. And that's what we can all benefit from. So how can you do more of that in 2023? And believe me, leadership is not a title. Leadership is a mindset and leadership is influence. So anyone can be a leader. Anyone can be a leader at any age. We've seen that in young children and young people, right? There's always uh, someone who, who takes you know, initiative. I don't wanna say take charge, but takes initiative, who takes the lead, right? Who's always willing to turn around to their friends and say, hey guys, come on. And so that leadership can happen at any point in time and we can grow and develop our leadership and amazing things happen when we do. Imagine how your relationships will develop and improve as you also develop and improve your leadership. So that's why this is such you know, an important topic. So we started with the law of the lid, which is basically your ability your leadership ability at any given time, right? Because your leadership lid can pop and raise uh, and that determines your level of effectiveness. So if you would like to be more effective this year, if you'd like to have a greater impact in your relationships, in your interactions, in your business, um, then it's, it's important to look at where your leadership lid is and how you can raise your lid. Um, and Remember, leadership is not about necessarily being an expert either. I think leaders are also on a path for learning. We're constantly looking for opportunities to grow and develop. And so we believe that the sky is the limit there, right? There's never uh, a finish line. There's never a finish line in terms of our knowledge, in terms of our experience, in terms of our potential or the goals that we set. Um, so leaders believe that the sky is the limit in, in any area and that we can increase our knowledge, our effectiveness, and our leadership at any time. So another law that I want to talk about this morning um, that John talks about in his book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, is the law of addition. And this is another one of my favorites. Um, and he John opens this lesson with a story about uh, Jim Senegal. And, and Jim was uh, or is the co-founder and CEO of Costco, uh, the, the big box store, right? Which I think is still probably in the top 10, 
if not the top five largest real uh, realtors in the, in the United States. Um, but what's interesting about this CEO, Jim Senegal, is that you would never know that by taking a look at him or his office. Um, he shares a story in the book, and I'm, I'm just going to refer to the book here, um, that Jim's office is is this is his furniture. It's a folding table and some folding chairs. Uh, he answers his own phone um, and his salary is in the bottom 10% of CEO earnings. So he also stands out because of the way he treats his employees. Um, he pays them very well. Uh, they're at the higher earning potential for their uh, competitors. And um, he you know, offers them an, an incredible benefits and they have a very low turnover rate. And so the other thing that's really interesting about this CEO, um, Mr. Senegal, is that he visits every Costco store once a year. Now, I don't know exactly how many stores they have nationally, we can look that up, but I'm sure that that's quite a commitment. And he maintains this open door policy. So any one of his employees has a direct line to him. Any one of his employees um, can come to him and talk to him anytime they want to. And he believes that when you treat people with respect, when you treat people and your customers right, that profit will follow. So many of us have heard the term, you know, people first, people over profit. So this particular CEO is embodying that. And so John calls this the law of addition. And, and what he means by that is that when you serve others, it brings value back to you. So when you serve other people, when you put other people first, you always win. Jim Rohn has a great quote on that as well. And so the law of addition is, is really helping us understand that when we put value first, when we put people first, when we put experience first, uh, that we will get in return all the things that we're looking to achieve, success, profit, opportunity. That's the law of addition. So there's one simple question that will help you see if you're living by the law of addition. And here it is. Are you making things better for the people who follow you? So think about the people in your life, in your business, whoever is following you, right? If you're their leader, this could even be your children, right? If you're their leader, are you making life better for the people who follow you? That's it. So if you can unequivocally answer yes, that's exciting. But if you have a moment where you pause and have to really think about it, it's okay. It's, a, it's an opportunity to get better. And, and it's really, that's another reason why I do this mojo every Monday is because if, if the content I share, if the questions I ask, gives you pause and helps you to think differently so that you can be better, even just a little bit better every day, that's a beautiful thing. So the question again, so that you can ask yourself if you're living by the law of addition is, are you making things better for the people who follow you? So if you run a company, a department, a team, a division, do the people who work with you have as big of an opportunity to achieve their goals as you do? Are you creating an environment big enough? Are you setting goals big enough so that everyone who's on your team has the opportunity to live life at a high level so that they can set big goals and achieve them? Because if, you're, if you can't think big enough for you and everyone that, that is following you, you know, then what is the capacity for that opportunity? So in, in the law of addition, you have to think about how do I bring value? So another great mentor of mine, um, is Diana Kokoska. She was the uh, founder of MAPS, which is a coaching division of Keller Williams, uh, and um, among many other things. And she has a reminder that goes off on her phone every morning, and I've been with her to see it. And it says, who am I bringing value to today? That is how she starts her day with that reminder, who am I bringing value to today? So that sets her mindset on 
the awareness that she wants to connect with someone and, and find out what they need and how she can bring value to them. And then at the end of the day, another reminder comes up and says, how did you add value to someone today? I love that. So if nothing else from today's mojo, maybe that's a new routine for you, is the awareness and the uh, intention around bringing value to other people every single day. So uh, there's a quote from Maxwell uh, in this chapter that really stood out to me. And he says this, the best place for a leader isn't the top position. It isn't the most prominent or powerful place. It's the place where he or she can serve the best and add most the most value to other people. So where can you add the most value to other people today and every day? I'm going to leave you with that thought um, because that really strikes a chord with me. And it's a, it's, um, a reminder and awareness for me as well every day because um, I run multiple businesses. I'm a partner in multiple businesses. I coach um, and, you know, do a lot of things in a day. <laughs> and uh, I need the reminder too, to be intentional about bringing value and connecting with other people in a way that helps them. And that's another reason why I continue to commit to this mojo. So whether one of you watches or a million of you watch, if I can bring a little value to someone's life, then I fulfilled my mission for today. So thank you so much for being here. We're going to talk a little bit more about some points in this book. And, and I'll share some things on our Facebook group as well throughout the week on this book, John Maxwell's book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. I encourage you to get it. You can listen to it on Audible as well. Um, it's really a powerful, profound book on leadership. And again, very simple and, and easy to apply the lessons in your life and in your business. So I'm excited that we're going to talk about this for the next couple of weeks. And uh, thanks again for joining me this morning on Mojo. If you find value in this forum, please continue to share the Facebook page um, and any of our recordings with your friends. I'd love for the community con to continue to grow. I appreciate those of you that join me uh, early on a Monday morning. And if you catch the recordings or the um, uh the replays. That's awesome too. And I'm really just glad that you're getting the content. So thank you again. Have an awesome and blessed day. And I'll see you back here next week. Take care, everyone.